Welcome back to the third and final set of the women's singles final here, the 1992 Super French Pope. Open. Monica Sellis now serving. Down one love in the third set. Premier service. And ace. Wrong footing graph totally. That is Celis's only ace so far. Give you an all-round view. There we are in our uh, commentary booth. Sixty television commentators here, 130, I believe, written press, and about 200 TV technicians, engineers that help put this on and send it all around the world. 15 all. The only thing in my mind that can beat Steffi Graf now is you look at the cherry picker crane up there. That fellow has got to get paid danger money. They bring him down now. There's two folks up there. They bring him down in a hurry if the storms come around. Finish that thought of mine a minute and it relates to these errors that Steffi Graf is coming up with as she shakes her head. I think the only thing that can beat her now, she has Celis physically exhausted, is that if she continues to make far too many errors, she's got to keep that ball in play, but she still has to hit it hard. 40-15. What's happened is that gradually Steffi Graf has just driven Monica Sellis further back behind the baseline. She started off this match right on the baseline. That's where she likes to play. That's where she controls and dominates the points from. Well, the footwork not there on that occasion, and that one was a good three meters long. Juiced. The pace from Graf that she's getting and she has gotten throughout the match. She made some errors early on. Has driven Celis back behind this baseline. Avantage, Mademoiselle Celis. Hit the top of the tape and look back. S'il vous plaît. That's an error she would n not like to make, and it's coming from somewhat some fatigue, both mentally and physically. She's playing some very tough points out here. But she knows she's not going to hold back, but she's still going to give it her all. That's, where, that's what's the incredible thing about Monica Sellis. When she's down, her back's against the wall. She just says to herself, I've got to keep going for it. Just go for more. Go for every ball. Right in the corner with pinpoint accuracy and in trouble. Gets out of it. One game all, third set. Un jeu partout. Everybody knows when they play Monica Sellis, no matter how down she seems to ever be in a match or how physically tired she she has something down in there that none of the other players seem to have in terms of being able to come back and fight 
Very much like a Jim Courier. Just like that. That's the type of return of serve she was hitting when she was down 4-2 to Sabatini in the semifinals. Sabatini just couldn't believe the winners that she was coming up with. That is Gruff's only double fault today. So have quite a few of them in the tournament. It's the only one so far. That's two remarkable returns in this game. The first point of the game, she rifled one straight down the line off the juice court. That time from the ad court, that was right in the corner. Two break points now. One of them saved. More aggressive you see when Monica Sellis is in, way inside the court like that and takes the ball early. How aggressive she is, so a third break point. And often see Sellis do that. She uh, misses returns, but by really going for them, just a little long or maybe into the net, that one she seemed to miss hit somewhat. Break point number four Avantage. on the help of the net. That was a pretty lucky way to get it. That brings her a fourth break point. This game is becoming very, very important psychologically and physically for both players. Sellis digs deep, finds a way, breaks serve, two games to one, third set. Je, Mademoiselle Siles, Mademoiselle Siles mène par deux jeux à un.
l'entreprise Welcome back on Nine's Wide World of Sports, our very exciting women's singles final. As you've just joined us, Steffi Graf, Monica Sellers. Sellers won the first set 6-2. Graf came back in a very gruelling second set to win at 6-3. Two games to one now. Sellers leads. She's just achieved the first service break of the third set. when Monica Sellis is down. She picks the pace up, hits the ball harder. Graf is very quick on her feet, so is a well-disguised drop shot from Sellis on this occasion after this half volley. But Steffi Graf, look with the ease at which she gets to this ball. Four, five, six. Very good stride to the ball. Plenty of room, plenty of time to make that shot. Just a great athlete. 30-15. This reminds you of the other day, doesn't it, when she played Sabatini. So it just mm -hmm. looks as though she's exhausted, all but out of it, comes back. Can Graf see. can't believe what's yeah. going on here. She fought so well to get back and win that second set. Now she's letting it slip away. She's certainly having many opportunities to come in, take advantage of some defensive positions that Monica Sellis has been in. Well, Steffi Graf has said that she has to change a game if she is to get up there and beat these players now. There's, there's so much competition up there with Sabatini and Celis and Sanchez Vicario, himself, Mary Jo Fernandez. As you look at this replay, brilliant forehand. She could just make it so much easier on herself. But she hasn't done it. She's, she talks about it and it's in, written in the press. And today she's hit two topspin backhands and one volley. why probably because when you can hit your forehand like that and you know when you're confident which she is right now Giuseppe Graf is more confident right now than she's been for a while she knows she can rely on that forehand to make points for her and that therefore doesn't feel the need to do the things that are uncomfortable for her Just when you think maybe Monica's losing it just a little bit physically or mentally, she comes up with shots like that. Game point. Galip. 
Sydney. She can't believe she missed that one. It looked like she might have changed her mind on it. She was a little bit early. Went from a grind to a squeal to a shriek. So hard. That's another thing we forget yeah. though also is that uh, she's How 18 years of age. Steffi's 22. Rancho Sanchez. Oh. All of them are still teenagers. Oh. Steffi's the veteran. I don't know who called this one out. Graf wants it checked. I don't think it was long. I think if it was anything, it was wide. I think it was called wide by the sideline judge. Call here, but, uh, Avantage, Mademoiselle Céleste. Yeah, it's called wide, definitely not long. And the crowd don't like the ultimate decision. It will stand though. Philippe Bourvin says play. Salas, gutsy performer that she is, hangs in tough. Whole serve, extends that lead now to three games to one. And you just know how badly both of these girls want this title. Monica Salas trying to make it three in a row. And Steffi Graf trying to win it again since 1988. It's the last time she won the French Open. That's ace. That's the second one. Number two for Graf. She served some big ones, but it's pretty hard to serve an ace against Monica Sellis, the best returner in the game. That first forehand there that she hit deep into the corner. If she'd have taken two steps forward, the next one would have been a volley around about waist high. And she was actually off balance because she was trying to back pedal, run backwards to the baseline to make that next shot. She missed the forehand, 15 all. She makes it look so easy too when she does unveil the backhand top spin. It's she's just so athletic and so gifted with her hands and with her body. She can do everything. It's a good shot. In practice, she plays that. It's well produced. It's well hit, and it sets up points, easy points for her. She just spent so much of her career using that forehand from the baseline as her big and only weapon, in addition to her serve. And it's tough to get out of that kind of mental mode.
Freeman and Sellis misses, so Graf Hall serves. Sellis leads three games to two. Mademoiselle Céleste mène par trois jeux à deux. Welcome back to State Roland Garros and Nines Wide World of Sports, our live coverage of the 1992 French Open Championships. Today is women's singles final. Tomorrow the men take court central, Jim Courier against Peter Corder. At the moment though, an enthralling three-setter going on here. Three games to two, Sellers with a break, third set. Uh, tough to get to those. Well played shot right on the line. 30 love. Two bad forehands in that game. It's not going to help the cause any. Monica Sellis with an easy service game that time. No problem with wins that service game to love. Just the type of game she needed at this stage. To stay in front. Four games to two. It was the first time in many games where Steffi Graf made forehand errors like that. Unforced. an effective slice Graf has. You can see Celis thought she was going to hit the slice up the line. Graf went back behind her. 15 all. Okay. 
30-15. Both women talking to themselves now. And they know it's coming down to crunch time midway through the third set, the seventh game. And you can see Graf's reaction to that ace. Ace number three. And there are signs all around the place for Steffi Graf, a very popular past champion here. Again, a very difficult shot to read that one. She holds it till the very last minute. And he snaps the wrist cross court for this one and watch off the same shot. She delivers it away from the body down the line. Well, the people along that line sort of feel the ball was long. The Graf supporters all over the grounds want it called good. To no avail, it's juice. Another big first serve from Graf. Avantage, Mademoiselle Graf. Steffi had a 40-15 lead in this game. Monica got it back to Deuce. Now it's game point. S'il vous plaît. going to be called good. Egalité. Steffi Graf was positive that that was wide. As he was hoping more than anything else. Must have just clipped the edge of the line. She's satisfied with the call now that she's had a second look. And we're back to juice again. Graf again on that game point got a big first serve in and just stayed on the baseline and just allows Sellers to throw the ball up deep and get into the point. Just guts and determination at the moment from Celis with Graf having the opportunity to make things happen. So now a break point opportunity for Celis to take this to 5-2. check the mark doesn't really matter now but uh, had she lost that she would have been pretty upset I think 
And she finishes the rally, though, with a blistering forehand. And that's the one she likes, this off forehand right here. This is the one that's won her so many points in her career. What a struggle this has turned into. Juice, there's the slow walk over, and now look at Celis. players taking the full time in between after this point they were all over the place sell us on the full stretch a blistering forehand from Graf again finally coming in after it you can see the fatigue really we've seen it before and she dug her way out so a game point for Graf she led 40 15 in this game faced a break point Well, she's not exactly hanging back. Sellis cranks up on the return, gets the short ball, and the other one hits the next one harder. Juice. You don't often see that in unforced air from Celis. In the middle of a point, she's missed a couple of returns. No, she misses them by going for them. They're the end. She didn't make too many makes errors by trying to hit winners and missing a few, not by keeping the ball in play. Game point, Graf. And Steffi Graf. The adoration of a crowd. She wins that game. Still behind the break, 4-3 when we come back. Mademoiselle Silas mène par quatre jeux à trois. Welcome back to a nice sunny day here at Roland Garros, Court Central, site of the 1992 French Open Championships. It's women's singles final, and what an exciting match this has turned out to be. Look as though Monica Sellis was going to run away with it. Steffi Graf came back. It is now 4-3 with a break. Sellis serving third set. This is really like a great boxing match. They're just going at each other with punches and hard shots and pace and power. They get knocked down. They get right back up.
30-0. Unorthodox style that Monica Sellis brought to women's tennis. Be hard to duplicate, it's hard to teach. Be impossible to teach, I would think. It's just perfect timing and wrist snap. Uh, she couldn't play like this with a wooden racket. It just wouldn't work. She and her older brother, Monica Salas, and her older brother, Zoltan, came over to this country when Monica was 12 for a month to practice at Voluntary Tennis Camp, and she never went home. Parents, of course, joined her over here, and they make the United States their home. Well, Salas now with another love game. She's won her last two service games without the loss of a point. The Ontario on the screen there, the man that looks after Boris Becker and a number of other players over here now. Watching on intently as Sellis takes that lead now to 5-3. Steffi Graf now serving to stay in this match. Sellis going for her third title in a row. That hasn't been done since 1935-37 when Hilda Sparling did it. $450,000 US to the winner. They're not thinking about that, though. All they're worried about is the trophy, the title. Photographers, and those zoom lenses, and those cameras, incredible. Thirty love. And tennis was covered by just fellows that had one little like a camera with them, and that was it. Now this tournament, there's about 120 photographers present. And it's wide. Steffi Graf only eight days away from her 23rd birthday. Has accumulated such an incredible record, win-loss record. And that's wide. 30 all. Monica Sellis now two points from the title. So a very nervous forehand there, halfway up the net from Graf. And that brings up match point for the number one seed here and defending champion. Seed will play. And it was the forehand that had let her down so often under pressure that that time found the corner. And you heard the squeal 
from Sellers. We're at Juice. Merci. Avantage, Mademoiselle Céleste. Match point number two. A deep breath from Graf as she prepares to serve. Good aggressive point from Graf to hang in there. Found herself at the net. Egalité. Back to Deuce, two Deuce. match points saved. Another time, the forehand lets her down. Another match point. Match point number three. Mesdames, Messieurs, s'il vous plaît. To save. She keeps going for that forehand, Steffi Graf. She's more confident now. There was a time when she'd make some errors on that forehand, be in winning positions, make errors on that forehand. And it would really put her off for quite a few games. Juice again. Right off the line, that one. Sellers walked up to check the mark. No question about it. So, a game point now for Graf. Pretty bold second serve. She really went for it. This crowd definitely wants to see more tennis. They want. This is a Graf crowd. Yeah, very, very pro Graf. <laughs> this has had everything in it, this match. It's had a lot of errors. It's had some fantastic tennis. And above everything else, it's had a great competitive spirit in both players. You can see Salas absolutely exhausted, grits of teeth, and the look of determination on this young lady's face. Juice for the fourth time. Well, unfortunately, it wouldn't, wouldn't have mattered because uh, Sellis got the luck of the net court again, and Graf had no chance. He was at the baseline, had no chance to recover, so Sellis did actually play the shot, hit the tape, and went over. So, match point number four for the number one seed.
Now let's make that five juices. As I said, this match has got everything in it, Betsy. Good depth on that one. And then the slice back in, and Graf decides she's going to come in off that one. No, she decides to change her mind, and she's going to retreat to the baseline. But it took a low bounce, and we're back to juice once more. The longest game in the match so far. And they've played some good ones. Three times she won that point and was denied it three times and finally put away the overhead. Both players giving absolutely everything they have. Staying in this. Jumping off that forehand. She gets away with it. Game point. through she saves four match points whole serve when we come back it will be Sellish serving for the match And a very appreciative crowd here at the change over there all chanting Steffi Steffi it's a graph crowd but I don't think I've experienced a more enjoyable women's match in a long while this has had everything guts determination great shot production and right now Monica Sellis who has had four match points serves for the match and the last two service games she has not lost a point she won the last two service games to love with Steffi Graf making Zero errors. Guys. And the first error and the first point comes from the Sellers racket. So a chance now for Graf Love 15. Good change of pace. That's the first time she's done that. And it really threw Graf's timing off. It's hard to even think how most people would react after having four match points, four chances to take the Grand Slam title for the third time. You have to come back and serve. Good low backhands from Graf. 15-30. Monica Sellis has a much more offensive m mentality when she's returning serve. When she's serving, I don't think she's quite as aggressive. Sellis tried to entice Graf into the net. Then Graf didn't want to know anything about it. This is what the crowd wanted. Graf has saved four match points. Now she has two break point opportunities. And just 
listen to the crowd. Two break points, Graf. And it's long. So Graf, talk about emotion. Save it. Five games all. Third set. Crowd go crazy here. Just when you think Graf is out of it, at five games to three, she saves four match points, comes back. For Sellis, who looked exhausted at the end of the second set, she gets the early break, gets to 5-3, and now Martin. falters. And now the key, the five all in this third set, is to try to forget everything that's happened in the past, which is pretty easy from our position and pretty, pretty difficult. In fact, unbelievably difficult when you're down there in that position. This is when the old cliche about playing one point at a time yeah. is so valuable and they've both had enough experience they've both been there before they're both champions but there are no Heinz Kunthardt Renee Stubbs there Stubbs here I'm sure has given Heinz Kunthardt enough information <laughs> she, <laughs> she gets it going these two won a doubles tournament together just about a month ago in Hamburg. They're good friends. And yeah, she's a good girl. Yeah, good Enjoy. doubles player. 15 love. There is no tiebreaker in the third set. They will play this one out. That's Mrs. Graf, too, sitting up in that player section just behind Heinz Guntart, who's been working with Steffi just for the last six months toward the end of last year. This Pavel Slazel, who helped take Steffi Graf to the top for nearly three and a half years. They worked together for almost five years. And finally, another volley. She's been in there twice, won the volley exchanges, and she went in on the right shot then. She was enticed there her last game, would not go in. This particular time, though, she does. And to do it at this stage of the match, show she's confident, show she's she mentally can. alert and in tune. Watch that one right on the racket, too. You can see her eyes just glued to that. 30-15. came off the line deep into the corner there and Graf was forced to try and play a two-handed backhand. Graf used to have a two-handed backhand years ago. She was out here hitting this morning and, and oh, was unhappy with some of her slices and was sort of mimicking two-hand backhands and she hits it awfully well. She's such a perfectionist. Very old. She's her own toughest critic. That's what drives her. That forehand error brings up a break point. There have been break points in the last three games. Graf held on to her service game, her last service game. She fought, she fought off four break points. And match points. They happen to be huge break points. They were. <laughs> Up 
Caronta. Caronta, ball called deep. Graf's not moving. Sellers wants it changed. Call as stands. Juice. Steffi Graf just taking a little extra time. She needs just to keep Caronta. herself composed now. Both women do at this stage. Avantage, Mademoiselle Graf. Mesdames, Messieurs, je vous en prie. game point. And it's long. Mm -hmm. Steffi Graf races for the sideline. She saved four match points on the last serve. She saved a break point that time round. She now leads six games to five. Final set. Welcome back to Court Central. The crowd tells the story. Steffi Graf now leading six games to five. No tiebreakers in the third set. Monica Sellis had four match points on the Graf serve. Merci. Now she serves to stay in the match. Fifteen love. Sellis so often is done and she's in trouble. She picks up the pace a little bit. She's starting to hit the ball more solidly. Again, 30 love. Monica was asked if she knows what it's like to choke, if she's ever choked. And Monica replied saying that, yes, she felt she choked at Lipton when she lost to Jennifer Capriati, double faulted on match point, and then she rattled off a few more points. And then they said, do you mean every time you lose a point, you think you're choking? <laughs> and Monica almost has that mentality. She hates to lose a point. That one is wide. Another love service game as you look at the Sellers family. There, Mr. and Mrs. Sellers. Mrs. Sellers charts these matches. And they are now at six games all. No tiebreakers in the third set. No 
amazing. And Salas has won three of the last four service games, Betsy, to love. And it was the one time when she served for the match that she faulted. That's understandable. It's very tough to lock these matches up to get out and serve them, serve them out, particularly for a Grand Slam title. Three times in a row she was up for it. Right on the line. Sellis throws her head in the air. That runs long. Forty love. Quarante zero. S'il vous plaît. Merci. Quarante quinze. Still game point, 40-30. Led 40 love here, got a big first serve in and Sellis knocked off a winning return. for the big return made the error and at least a smile on her face as she goes to the sidelines knowing that when she comes back Monica Sellis will have to serve again to stay in this match Mademoiselle Graf men par sept jeux à six Not too many words can describe this match. Unbelievable tennis. Great guts and determination. Let's serve. This is what sport is all about, isn't it, yep. Fred? When it comes down to this stage of, a, of an event, and it goes way beyond the skill. This kind of match and occasion completely expose everything that's in a person. Charity would not go and paid the price. Watch this forehand and this reply. He goes in, takes that on the and she now she lets it bounce, lets Sellers back into the court, knows exactly where that next forehand is going and has the put away. Very easy from up here. One time but, earlier though, she did sneak in yeah. and take that volley out of the air, won the point easily, but 
I guess when you're down there in the situation that these two are in, you, you oh, just go saying. back into what is your yep. natural pattern. It's easy from up here. And this has been one of the great ones, this match. And it's wide. Another squeal from Sellis, but she's not going to get it back. 40-15. Drop shot played there by Steffi Graf. And the score comes to seven all. And that's only the third drop shot she's tried in the match. Been successful on one of them. And what a fight this has turned into. Mesdames, Messieurs, les joueuses sont prêtes. Merci. Steffi Graf seems to have still this very calm around her. She said, she said how calm she feels now. And she really looks at her face, looks at, she came in on this one, hit a big forehand and came in and was therefore able to get the let cord. Yeah, if she hadn't have started to move in there, there would have been another let cord that Celis would have had. Celis has had the luck with the net cords. Watch out. Fifteen all. Sellers will not go away. Anything short like that gets dealt with. Graf thinks that is good, and it's been called out, I think. Wait for the call. 15.30. Now, Graf is going to ask the question. She remembers she's just checking to say, well, is that ball out? And it has been confirmed by Philippe Bourvon, the chair umpire, that it was long. play and that's the type of shot we kept thinking would be so successful for Steffi Graf this entire match doesn't even have to be a well struck drop shot just something inside that service line that'll draw sell us in 30 all Sellis. Players have been on court now for two and a half hours. It was just 30 minutes ago that Monica Sellis had her four match points. 
Second graph serving at 3-5. Saved four match points. Premier service. Oh, she's missed it. Je, Mademoiselle Cédé. Hit the off forehand. Didn't want to go down the line with it. Missed the easiest of forehands to lose the serve. So now, Graf loses serve, and when we come back, Monica Sellis once more will serve for the title. Welcome back on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Mr. Hans Pohlmann, who does television for Germany, is right next door to us here, and he's appalled at that forehand shot that Steffi Graf just hit then to go down a service break. Of course, this match going back live to, to Germany. Now, it is Monica Sellis serving again for the match. 15 love. Watch this shot right here. Graf just stayed still. Monica held and thought Graf would go running. Played a great volley there, but then backed up. If she had stayed, look at the anguish on her face. Yeah, she tried to get back to the baseline after that first volley to try and stay in the point. 15 all. See how far back Monica was when Graf played that drop shot. That's about the fifth drop shot now that she's played, and the perfect time to do it. Look how far out of court Celis is. Graf moves in with the slice motion, disguises it well, and Celis nowhere near it. Well, this match has had everything in it. This has got to be a much better match than we thought it was going to be a good one, but this is just in one word has been amazing. And that one hits the tape, does not go over. 15, 42 break points. I say it again, uh, Heinz Gunthard can't believe what's going on here, as can Renee Stubbs or Mrs. Graf. Two break points. Oh, what a drop shot. Doesn't even reach the net. So the tension mounts, and we get to eight all. Tension and fatigue. Mr. Sella still can smile. Mrs. Sellis, I asked Monica if her, if her mom really does chart those matches, and she says, well, she does keep notes. She just gets so nervous she can't bear not to do something with her hands. And I, I would think she'd be <laughs> I guess on her either, tenth page about now. Yeah, I guess it's either do that or bite your fingers off. Eight all. Amazing turn of events because, as I've said just a couple of games ago, Sellis has lost very few points on serve when she hasn't served for the match. In the two service games that she served for the match, she's lost easily.
I was just about to say, Fred Woodall is left yeah. in Monica Sellis. Not backing off, is she? We've said that time and time again when she looks exhausted or out of it. She comes up with a more aggressive winner right up the line. We knew it would come down to some possible fatigue with Monica Sellis. We knew Steffi Graf would not face that problem as much as more of a mental problem, more of a mental fragility maybe coming up with some unforced errors just like that forehand. 15-30. That one's long. 30 all. First set took 26 minutes, 6-2, Sellers. Second set, 46 minutes, 6-3, Graf. This one, this set, an hour and 25 minutes old. Still no decision. Break point. The last two games have been a break of serve. Graf to lose hers. Sellis lost hers when serving for it. Now another opportunity for Sellis. Sellers breaks once more, leads it nine games to eight when we come back. Mademoiselle Céleste mène par neuf jeux à huit. An hour and 27 minutes this third set struggle has been in progress and uh, quite an incredible match. The last three games have been breaks of serve. Sellis now on the verge of serving once more for the match to win this title three times in a row. And just cliffhanging stuff, Betsy. Mm, unbelievable. It was f almost 40 minutes ago that Monica Sellis held those four match points on the graph serve. And I believe it's new tennis balls again with Sellers serving. Yeah, Renee Strubbs yelling out, come on, to her friend Steffi Graf. She's sitting alongside Heinz Gunthardt and in front of Mrs. Graf.
15 all. close call graph going to have a look at it and I guess it got the back edge of the line because she's not complaining too much but another centimeter that would have been out but it's not so it's 30 15 And it was the little hook roll cross court that pushed Steffi Graff out of court. A little roll from the two-hander from Sellis. Now she has another two match points. She's had four, but they're all on the Graff serve some 40 Eagle minutes play. ago. was a pretty calm cool collected forehand there on a match point down both players have produced some of their best stuff when they're down yeah you can say that again that was a, a well played point another match point here for Sellers. Waves to the crowd as the winner in two hours and 43 minutes. And the families exchange congratulations as well. And Betsy, just one of the most enthralling women's finals that we've seen here at Roland Garros. It's just unbelievable, Fred. First, we thought the women's semifinals were some of the best matches, some of the be best comebacks we'd ever seen. Today's final was, I think, the most exciting match I've ever seen, and there's been some unbelievable matches. I, don't, I just don't know how Monica Sellis pulled that out. She just, we've, we've talked about how much she has down inside, and she can dig into that reservoir, and, and uh, she came up with an unbelievable victory today because Steffi Graf played some of her best tennis in a long time. And that is the trophy that is Monica Sellis's. She's won it three years in a row now. Steffi Graf was going for her third title here at the French. She's won 10 Grand Slam titles as the women go up. And they will be presented the trophy. The winner will be presented the trophy by none other than Chris Evert. Chris Evert's won seven French championships here, seven French titles as Philippe Chatrier gives the girls a kiss. And what a tremendous effort it has been. So Chris, I don't know whether Chris can lift that up. Yeah, as she's carried it herself on many occasions. Position right now holding this trophy up. She said that she was very lucky at the end. She had a few words with French television and said that she had never played a whatever you call it. She said, I don't know what the score was in the third set. I had never played that many games in a third set. And the score, she didn't know the score. It happened to be 10-8 in the third set. So now a tremendous hand for Steffi Graf, and you know how disappointed she is that she got so close. Oh, just total anguish. She was so close to winning. She fought so hard, and she played so well. And so many times in this day-to-day, -day, two hours and 43 minutes, really deserved this victory with her great play, and just was denied her by the true guts and grit of Monica Sellis. Well, the crowd are 
obviously asking for the ladies well, to say something, and first, it's Steffi Graf I'm first. Monica. I think uh, I think it was a great finals, and she really deserved to win. <laughs> Great words from a great champion. But there's one thing I want to say. I've played a lot of tournaments and um, I played at a lot of places, but I've never had a crowd like this. Never, ever before. Thanking the crowd for trying to get her through the day. It has been definitely a pro crowd, a pro graph crowd here. Monica Sellers had to fight that battle as well as Steffi Graf today, and she did. There are a few persons I want to thank. That's first of all my coach Heinz, Rene for coming back, and um, a m most special thank you to all my family for all the support. And uh, I'll be back next year, and hopefully you too. That's Heinz Gunther, the coach, who she's been with for six months, and Renee Stubbs, who made a special trip back here to be with her friend over the weekend. She was over in England, and now the champion. 450,000 US dollars richer, plus three years in a row. She's won the French, hasn't been done since 35, 36, 37. Right there. First of all, I would just like to say this is the best final ever played, and I think it's too bad both of us could not have won because, I mean, both, it was just so close, and both of us deserve to win today's match. Uh, Philippe Chartre on the left and Chris um, Everett there standing next to I would like to thank all my supporters Steffi. here and I would like to thank also my father who helped me get here and win this tournament three times. I want to thank him a lot for being there for me always. There's Caroli. He loves it. Um, He's a very happy man. I would like to thank all my family, my mom, my brother and everybody for being behind me. Thank you. Um, and secondly, I always love coming back here. I always played wonderful. This year was no exception also. Um, I still can't believe I won this tournament. Um, but um, uh, hold on. I hope to come back next year for many, many more years. And I love playing here. And thank you. So there, the champion, three years in a row. She's done it. Always likes to play here. And the trophy will once more be held aloft so that the photographers can take their pictures and send them around the world. And this has been just one tremendous women's match in the women's semi-finals and the women's final have been much better than the men's competition. Two easy semi-finals yesterday with the men, so if they can uh, do it as well.